professor of political science at Tennessee Technological University and general secretary of the EU TCC EU Turkey Civic Commission Michael Gunter thanks for joining us today thank you thank you so let's start with the Turkey's occupation attacks to Kurdistan Turkey has recently begun another military operation against the PKK in northern Iraq at the same time Turkey continues making treats about invading further into the Kurdish majority areas of the north and east Syria what do you think is the aim of the Turkish government's domestic and foreign policy in the region well, I don't know Erdogan personally, but I suspect that his main aim is domestic political uh, approval in Turkey. Every time he has these problems in Turkey, they take the people's mind off the problem, blame other people for it, and have some type of a foreign adventure, and then the people get in back of them. So domestic political reasons, largely. What do you think people in Western countries can do to pressure the Turkish government and support the people of the region who are under attack? Well, I don't have all the answers here. And we have to remember that Turkey is a sovereign, independent country. So there are limits on what we can do to Turkey. Uh, and plus, if you try to push the Turks too much, they're going to get even worse about this. And it will just play into Erdogan's hands and say, look, the West is against me, they're pressuring me, and the Turkish majority will back them even more. So it has to be subtle, Aram. It, it has to be subtle, and you don't want to punish uh, Erdogan in the open where he will have to stand up against you for political reasons in, in Turkey. So I would say behind the scenes, through diplomatic techniques, the West should negotiate with everyone, remind him that we are in the West in a position to help him economically, to help him with the refugee problem, to help him with any legitimate problems, with uh, foreign problems, with Kurds, with Syrians, with Russians, with Greeks, with is a litany of practically everyone is a problem for Turkey, but that the West is in a position to help Turkey and do this confidentially in a private diplomatic way so that you can talk realistically with Erdogan. But when you try to make it public and shame him, he is not going to respond. He is going to just stand even firmer against you. So that, that's what I would try. Um, another significant development in Turkey is the Kobani trial um, of um, 108 people, including the HDPs, arrested former co-chair Figen Yüksekta and Selahattin Demirtaş, held on April 26th in Ankara. Uh, what do you consider to be significance of the HDP in Turkey, first of all? We have to remember, Aram, that as recently as 2015, Turkey was negotiating with the PKK and other Kurdish groups in the so-called uh, Kurdish opening. And it was only uh, because uh, <clears throat> Erdogan lost his majority temporarily in the elections on, I guess it was June 7th, 2015, that Erdogan suddenly broke off these negotiations with the PKK. So again, it, it's political, domestic political problems. and. Uh, what Erdogan is basically trying to do is he thinks that his future depends on a strong Turkish nationalist approach. And by attacking the HDP like this, criminalizing the HDP, he can blame the Kurds on his problems, his economic problems, his military problems, and unite the country in back of him again. And frankly, it seems to work. So uh, uh, that's what I see is going on now in Turkey. What does the repression and uh, attacks against the HDP indicate about democracy and the rule of law in Turkey? Unfortunately, and, and let's be certain about this. I am a friend of Turkey. I would like to see Turkey successful. And 
That means a successful democracy. And unfortunately, as you know, there has been a lot of slippage in Turkey in recent years. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Countries Without Borders ranks Turkey, I think, 149th out of 180 countries. And Freedom, uh, Freedom House ranks Turkey, uh, Freedom for the Press, uh, way down as not free at all in the lowest possible category. Uh, because of Erdogan's problems and his solutions to uh, lashing out at supposed enemies in Turkey, uh, he has uh, hurt Turkish democracy and hurt it badly. And I, I'm afraid that unless uh, unless Erdogan uh, can be restrained, and I don't know how he can be restrained, except again, I would say. Instead of arguing with him publicly, to to have more confidential diplomatic contacts to sh uh, show Erdogan that Turkey has many friends in the West if Turkey is willing to act more democratically, and that this will redound favorably in favor of Turkey's problems. We're not asking Erdogan to surrender anything. We're simply asking him to live up to the goals of Turkish democracy, which are his goals supposedly, and that his problems are caused by his lack of willingness to cooperate with the people in Turkey who are experiencing these difficulties, mainly the uh, Kurds. The HDP, as you know, is the second largest opposition party in Turkey. What is he trying to do? Get rid of all the opposition? And as we know, every time Turkey abolishes a pro-Kurdish party, they always have a spare party that just comes on board again. So uh, we'll be right back to square one again if the HDP is, is abolished. There'll be a, a new pro-Kurdish party. So uh, there's a lot of trouble here, and much of it is caused by Erdogan himself. How do you think the international organizations, specifically the EU Parliament com and, and, and the commissions, can act to pressure, uh, uh, make more pressure on Turkey and, and to, to support the HDP? Well, again, I stress uh, not getting into a public row with Turkey about this, because then Erdogan and the Turks will get their dander up and just stand firm against any progress at all. Rather, the essence of successful diplomacy is usually confidentiality. Behind the scenes with diplomatic techniques, we can offer Turkey a lot, like military support, economic support. I think right now the main problem Erdogan has is an economy that is going from bad to worse. And there's a lot that we in the West can do to help them on that, including also the tremendous burdens Turkey has on uh, close to 4 billion refugees that it's having to support right now. Uh, we can work with Turkey on these problems in a, a non-confrontational, confidential manner, which I think then Erdogan might be able to respond more positively rather than if we're trying to force him to uh, respond in a public uh, milieu, which would embarrass him and, and make him just uh, oppose any cooperation at all. Dear Michael Gunter, Professor of Technical Science at the Tennessee Technological University and General Secretary of the EU Turkey Civic Commission, thanks for joining us and thank you for your valuable comments today. Well, thank you for uh, all the work you do, too. It's very valuable to get these different opinions uh, broadcast like this. Thank you. Thank you.